Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and today I'm going to show you a fantastic hearty fall soup. This is cream of roasted butternut squash and sweet potato soup. Now I went out to my local Harvest Barn Country Markets yesterday and I saw that they had a billion different kinds of squashes and gourds and pumpkins and I've got a whole bunch of them but today I'm going to use my butternut squash. Look at this giant amazing squash and it's from Ontario which is even cooler. So this is a butternut squash. The inside has that beautiful um, orangey flesh. It's going to be fantastic. Now make sure you get out to the barn one of the locations either in St. Catharines or in Niagara on the Lake. You'll be happy you did or check out more information on them at harvestbarn.ca. You'll be happy. I'm telling you. Get out there. They have really great stuff. All right so this is what we're going to do. I have my oven preheating to 375 degrees and I'm going to get these um, veggies prepared. Okay. All right so let's get in here. I'm only going to use half of my squash today to actually use for um, my soup that I'm making and uh, the rest is going to just sit in my refrigerator. So let's get these seeds out. So I'm just going to cut it in half lengthwise because I may want to do a dish where I'm stuffing it and that's going to give me that option. So work very carefully. This is a very dense hard vegetable. Take your time. Make sure you don't cut yourself. Use a nice sharp knife. Most accidents happen when you're using a dull knife. Okay, so make sure that you're using a nice sharp one. Gorgeous. Look at this thing. <gasps> Look at this beautiful butternut squash. I'm telling you, what a gorgeous thing. It's nice and uh, moist. Boy, it smells so fresh. It's so dense. Gosh, that's beautiful. So I'm actually going to scrape out the innards of this little bottom part. See, in a butternut squash, the only um, seeds you have are in the bottom. And I'm going to use this for toasting for a snack. So just use a big spoon, that usually does the best job. Okay, now my seeds are in the oven for a little snack. Make sure you check out that recipe for how to do that. And I put the rest of the innards in a stock that I've been making for the last couple hours, okay, for my soup. Now you can use chicken stock, you can use vegetable stock for the soup tonight, you can use whatever kind of stock you want. This is a mixture of vegetable, chicken, and some other bones too. So it's just a mixture, okay, it's a stock. And uh, that's going to go in there, and this is probably going to be, it's still going on my stove for the next, like, an hour, because these guys have to roast up, okay? So it gives me another hour with those innards. Don't waste anything. If you don't want to use it right now and you already have stock, just throw it into a resealable plastic bag in the freezer and use it at another time. It's nutrients that you don't need to throw out, okay? So if you wanted to, you could peel the outsides of these um, nice squash to roast, but it's unnecessary. I'm just going to cut it into chunks and we're going to roast it up together, okay? At the end, you're going to scrape the flesh off, off of the rind because you don't want to eat that, okay? And uh, that's how we're going to do it. So I'm just going to cut it into manageable sizes here so it can roast up well. And I'm going to throw them into a bowl. Toss it with some olive oil. That's a good tablespoon, maybe in a little bit. Some freshly cracked black pepper. And some sea salt. Toss that up. Make sure that everything's nice and coated. And I'm going to arrange them on a baking sheet with the skin side down. So let's prepare the sweet potato. Now I'm just going to peel off any uglies that I don't like. Does it look pretty? Because I'm actually going to leave most of the skin on. That's where lots of the nutrients are. And since this is going into a soup that's going to be blended up anyway, we want to keep those nutrients as much as we possibly can. You're not going to see them and no one's going to notice them there. Now these peelings can also be added to my stock on my stove right now that I'm making for this particular soup. And again, you can use your own stock, but I uh, just made one from scratch. So in it goes, that'll have another hour or so with my stock. Now I'm going to cut my sweet potato into similar sized chunks so that everything kind of roasts at the same rate. Toss with olive oil, pepper, salt. Make sure they're nice and coated just like the squash. Now 
Now these are going into a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to turn down the temperature to 350 degrees and we're going to finish roasting it for about 45 to 55 minutes or until they're nice and knife tender. In they go. Okay, these guys have been going for 15 minutes or so and they are steamy, steamy. We're going to throw the, them back into the oven on 350 degrees and we're going to let them roll for at least a good 45 minutes probably to make sure that they're nice and knife tender. Back in the oven. All right, these guys are done. Now they're nice and caramelized up all by themselves with their natural sugars and we're going to make sure that they're for a knife tender, either one. And uh, they are, they're gorgeous. Let's make sure okay. the sweet potatoes are done. And they are. Everything's done perfectly. Okay, so this is how we're gonna continue. I have about 10 cups of my stock. That's what I'm using tonight. Into my pot it goes. Now my sweet potatoes can be added directly like this with the skins and everything. I'm going to add a bay leaf. Now this bay leaf is gonna come out before we zip it all up. So use a nice big one so it's easy to find. I'm gonna start heating this on about a medium high heat. And I'm gonna let these guys just chill out for a minute because I actually have to be able to manipulate it and way too hot to use right now for me to touch. So I'm gonna wait for them for just a couple minutes while I'm seasoning up this soup the way I want it seasoned and then we'll scoop out that flesh. Okay, let's start with some freshly cracked pepper. I'm adding maybe a teaspoon to add some sea salt. We're gonna adjust the seasonings at the end, don't forget. We're just guesstimating right now. A cinnamon stick. I'm gonna fish that out along with the bay leaf at the end. I have a couple nice little cloves of garlic from my garden. You can just throw them in whole like that because you're gonna buzz everything up. I'm also going to grate some ginger, okay? Maybe uh, just over a tablespoon of freshly grated ginger. Skin and all, it's good for you. Now you don't have to add any of these spices if you don't want to, it's just the spices that we uh, enjoy with our squash and our sweet potato. I have about two tablespoons of brown sugar. Now I like a little bit of heat and you could have a couple choices here. You could add cayenne pepper, you could add chili pepper, you could add more um, black pepper, but I'm gonna add a little bit of smoked paprika and I'm gonna use the hot variety. Now this comes from La Chinata. You can check out my review on this stuff so you know where to find it. This is a hot variety. They also have sweet and a bittersweet um, and a premium of the hot and the sweet. So I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon because I like it nice and spicy. And also, it's gonna give a little bit of a nice smoky flavor. Who doesn't love that? Now, you could add onions, you could add shallots or scallions, whatever you like. I have a nice handful of chives from my garden and some parsley as well. I'm just gonna rough chop that because don't forget, it's going to be um, all whizzed up, but I'm just gonna help it along a little bit. Now, I'm just gonna grate a little bit of nutmeg in there, however much you like. I have these beautiful nutmeg nuts, the whole ones, or you can just sprinkle a couple dashes. I'd say about an eighth of a teaspoon. So I'm just gonna use a large spoon, a big tablespoon, and I'm going to scrape the flesh off of the skin. And you may be able to just peel it off easily, which is kind of working better. And into the soup it goes. Now again, these skins can be saved in your freezer for the next time you make super stock, um, like I would have done today with my um, stock I would have put these in but uh, you can just save them or you can throw them out make sure you compost them in your garden or something like that now the sweet potato and the butternut squash is already cooked what I'm doing right now is I just want those ingredients to marry a little bit to get all combined nicely to get those spices going to get that cinnamon flavor to use those um, get those garlic cloves nice and tenderized so stir that all up and let it go for a good 20 30 minutes if you've got that time okay them. Okay, my soup's been going for about 30 minutes and I'm going to now fish out the bay leaf and the cinnamon stick. So now I'm going to take my immersion blender or you can pour it all into a real blender but be very careful. I'm going to take my immersion blender and I'm just going to smooth everything out. Now if you like to keep some chunks, feel free. I'm going to make mine nice and smooth tonight. 
Okay, now that's nice and smooth. There's times where I like to add a little bit of protein to this. Now, in order for me to do this, and it also thickens it up, I like to add a half a brick or a whole brick of tofu, believe it or not. And in fact, people that don't want to even eat tofu won't even know it's in there. It thickens it up, it makes it nice and creamy, and it's actually a really good trick, especially for those people that have a really hard time with their tummies. For instance, my mom uh, had breast cancer and she was going through chemotherapy, and that was some of the only ways I could get some real protein into her, was to sneak it into soups like that and cream it up really nicely, okay? Tonight, I don't need to do that. I'm gonna add a cup of cream now. This is just half and half. You can add all the way up to whipping cream if you like. Stir that through. Now we're gonna do a taste test to adjust the seasonings if we need to. Don't burn yourself. Mmm, boy that's good. My salt is just right, it's nice and spicy. I'm gonna add a little bit more brown sugar and maybe a dash or two of ground cinnamon. Now, I'm gonna stir that through and I'm also gonna finish it with a dab of butter just to make it nice and glossy and enriched up that broth a little bit. That's my mama's truth. Do another taste test. Oh, and I'm right where I want to be. Now let's plate this up. So I'm just gonna ladle this up. It's gorgeous and it's nice, got a nice sheen on the top. It's nice and creamy. Now I'm gonna garnish it with two little um, chive strands, crisscross them. And I'm going to sprinkle with a couple of those uh, butternut squash seeds that we toasted up. Now here you go, I can't really lean it much more than that, if you can see in there, it's uh, gorgeous. It has the nice chive strands and those little uh, toasted seeds are just floating in there. Beautiful. Now the only thing left to do is to taste it. Mmm. Mmm, what a gorgeous fall soup. Nice and sweet, spicy. That hint of smokiness from the smoked paprika really did a nice job. Those vegetables, you can tell they were caramelized and delicious. Mmm. The soup is nice and hearty and rich. Mmm. I can taste that ginger, and you almost can feel a little bit of the crunch of the ginger. Mmm. So delicious. Now, if you'd like your soup a little bit thicker, just use less broth if you want, you can cut the broth in half, or again, you can add that tofu and it thickens it up quite nicely, all right? So that's how you do it. That's how you cook cream of roasted butternut squash and sweet potato soup. You can do it too. It's pretty easy. It takes a little while, um, especially if you're doing everything from scratch, including the broth, but it's worth it. It's delicious soup, and I think everyone will be um, really impressed by it. The color is nice. Um, the contrast with the green chives and, and those herbs are really nice. And if you do toast those uh, seeds, they work well, not only as a midnight snack, but you can fold them on there as a nice garnish too. So there you have it. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at facebook.com slash cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on ifood.tv slash cooking with Kimberly, youtube.com slash cooking with Kimberly, and you can find me syndicated on Roku. Come to my website at cookingwithkimberly.com and subscribe, interact with us, and let us know what's going down in your culinary world, all right? Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.